And we're apparently up. Let me make sure I get the camera here. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, piece tonight is all of our sacks have a picture. Oh, probably one more time. Take two. All of our sacks have a picture of Oliver Sacks, uh, read by the author, Juanita Renee. Copyright 2016, all rights reserved. Oh, by the way, over here is my associate, Lucky. She uh, edits a lot of my work. Oliver Sacks, have a picture of Oliver Sacks, written by Juanita Renee. The things you wind up, the things you own wind up owning you. It's only after you lose everything that you're free to do nothing. That's uh, Chuck Palahniuk, I think this is, from the movie Flight Club. Bike Club. Why don't you just die? Norma thinks as she looks down on her husband Sherman's emaciated body. Her blue eyes travel along the diseased topography of the black man's anatomy, running over the landscape of dome-shaped carcinomas, yellowed encrusted lesions. His sour sweat reeks of cancer and ammonia. Norma lights her homemade candle, suffusing the sick room air with the scent of patchouli and the intangible odor of arsenic. A black sewer rat exits from a hole in the baseboard. Its eyes, it eyes her suspiciously. There had been plenty of rats in the ghetto apartment she cohabited with Sherman in their college years. He was so fucking handsome, so bright. He wanted to change things, make the world a better place. After they married, he turned to drink and womanizing. He burned through much of his inheritance, and now his medical bills were burning up the rest of it. The life insurance policy she filed, she filled out on him before his illness would save the day. But he kept lingering like a guest who refused to leave long after he had worn out his welcome. A black widow emerges from a stack of yellow, dusty, uh, register guard newspapers. The little venomous creature creeps along behind her, perhaps sensing a kindred spirit, as she makes slow progress around the debris-lined hallway towards her bedroom. <clears throat> Norma Mann settles into the frozen avalanche of rubbish she calls a bedroom. A not-so-delicate bouquet of fish market dumpster pervades the room. The angry red rash in her left arm itches furiously, its torment only abating when she rearranges the deuterus in a trash fortress with her pea-stained second-hand mattress at its apex. She can hear the raspy voice of the... Uh, skin irritation directing her as she does so, berating her when she slackens in its construction. Due to being terribly peckish, bitch, bitch, bitch. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Itch, itch, itch. Mom, God came to me in a dream last night. He told me that Dad's passing last winter was a sign that Jesus is going to heal you of your hoarding. Bitch, bitch, bitch. 
itch, itch, itch. And it wouldn't hurt you to start going back to church, you. Norma listens to the nails on shockboard screech of her daughter Annie's harangue, just supposed, against the rashes in her monologue. At the behest of the rashes and treaties, Norma reaches out, placing a measled hand over her daughter's mouth. A pot spreads like a virulent brush fire, consuming Annie's mocha-hued flesh in seconds. The pustules burst all at once, weaving verdant, rancid pus. Her daughter twitches as she falls to the cool concrete floor of the patio. There is the incongruent sound of wind chimes and sparrows, and the barely perceptible din of a distant TV as she lays, finally silent and dead, looking at her daughter's corpse. It is as though a shadow were lifted from Norma's heart. She weeps, running her infected hands to Annie's afro. Remembering how when her daughter was a little girl, the other grade school children had made fun of her negroid features and her kinky hair. Norma had comforted her, telling her that people are like flowers, each a different color and a different shape, but all beautiful in God's eyes. Eyes. The eyes. Of numerous cockroaches are upon her as Norma drags her daughter's cadaver away. They watch her with their multifaceted eyes, twitching their antennae, clambering over the piles of trash. Clickety clack. An army of mourners drumming a percussive insectile eulogy. over the deceased are now resting in Norman's bedroom, sanctuary. Norma lays next to Annie, her stomach rumbling with hunger, <clears throat> exhausted. She falls asleep, listening to the banging of a loose shutter. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. She wakens the landlady's persistent knock on her front door. Knock, knock, knock. Inspection day, open up. The rash screams in Norma's ears. Kill her. Knock. Kill her, or we'll be homeless. Knock. Norma opens the front door. With one touch, she seals the landlady's face. The world starts spinning before Norman's eyes. A dizzying spin. Spin! Spin! Ever since she tripped on a stack of her trash tip treasures, wrecking her noggin, making the metal plate in her cabeza ring like a cartoon wedding bell. The plate that was installed at the age of ten, when her older, retarded brother Jimmy, for reasons known only to him, massaged her brain box with a Louisville slugger. Spin. Spin. 
since that day a year ago, her world has been a, a clown car carousel of seesawing thoughts. Spin. The tilt wheel continues to revolve as Norma lays down amid the dead, a clear fluid leaking from her nose. Weak from hunger, she realizes that she is not the same somehow. She is changing. The rash covers all of her, even her eyes now. Blind. Filled with dark visions. She weaves dreams and they weave her. Norma emerges from her refuse cocoon. Her worm-like glorified body is a crazy quilt pattern of rotting corpse limbs. Moving ass over tea kettle, hellishly hodgepodge, piggly piggly, with the landfill flotsam and jetsam. She is so ravenous. And there is a world outside to eat. And that was Oliver Sacks and a picture of Oliver Sacks, written and read by the author. Juanita Renee. Pleasant dreams, Jeffries.